Welcome to Vancouver's Gastown District in the final event in the Canadian Tire Cycling Series, the Gastown Grand Prix. It could be an interesting day for these cyclists because if the weather forecast holds, there could be some rain, which makes the cobblestones here in Gastown extremely treacherous. The Canadian Tire Cycling Series began in Manitoba, in Winnipeg, with the Cobblestone Classic. It moved into Quebec with the Tour de Lac Megantic. Staying in La Belle Provence with a Grand Prix Cycliste de Beauce Canadian Tire. Then on to Alberta and Edmonton for the Canadian Tire Race of Champions. Now this series really closes with two races. It began yesterday in the sunshine in White Rock with the Tour de White Rock. So it had a road race to begin and wraps up with a criterium here in Gastown. Again, if the weather becomes nasty, this course will certainly become nasty as well. We'll have some of the best cyclists in North America coming up from the Gastown Grand Prix. Now back to CTV Sports Control in Toronto. Joining me in Vancouver, my partner in crime, Eric Moffat. And Eric, we're about a half an hour away from the women's criterium. But as part of the Canadian Tires series, they close out the series with a one-two punch. A criterium today, but yesterday in White Rock under bright sunshine, a road race. The road race is very strong in White Rock. It runs along the beach and then up some very, very steep hills. It's about 60K for the women. And we have to be watching our top Canadian rider, Clara Hughes, with Team Kalua. She's the overall leader in the Canadian Tire Cycling Series for women right now. And Team Kalua, far and away, the best team. Now, the one to watch is an old veteran, a world champion from Sweden, Marianne Berglund. She's back, and if she's in a bunch sprint at the end, to watch for her. Well, before they hit the cobblestone here in Gastown, they hit the road in White Rock. And what a course in White Rock. Along the beach marine drive into a residential area, down a very steep decline. Another climb on Magdalene, and then back down marine drive through the start-finish area. Five laps of the course in White Rock, and a beautiful day. 11.7K per lap, so a grand total of 58.5 kilometers. We pick it up with three laps to go, and there are the leaders, Clara Hughes right there in purple, and Mary Ann Berglund. Why we're not surprised that she is in the lead again. Clara Hughes has had a terrific Canadian Tire Cycling Series as we see the group in pursuit of the leaders at this particular point. As you saw in the opening, Clara Hughes has done extremely well winning the Cobblestone Classic along with the Tour de Lac Megantic. This is one of the climbs very early in this Tour de White Rock and a nice steep one to test their legs. A lead group of five, and you'll watch in the background is Clara Hughes, the leader in the purple jersey, all of a sudden has a mechanical problem. She has to pull back from the lead group, and she gets some technical support. Had a problem with the chain. But for Clara Hughes, who has proven that she is becoming one of the strongest riders in this country, she is back on her bike, pedaling strong, and very quickly catches up again. But then, that is a credit to her two teammates in the lead group, Leslie Tomlinson and Sue Palmer, who slowed up Linda Jackson and Marianne Berglund and kept everything in line for Clary Hughes right here to catch up again. And a good sign of a great team. Team Kalua blocking off the other potential lead riders as their lead rider, Clara Hughes, catches them. Of course, their job is to put her at the finish line at the end. So again, a lead group of five. There's Linda Jackson as she takes her turn at the front, coming down one of the steep descents. The Tour de White Rock is really a two-loop course. The first tight loop, four kilometers, then another climb back up Marine, which is about 7K and has a tough, tough climb. The veteran, Marianne Berglund, off the top of the lead group of five. She is the only member of Team Bodywise to compete in this weekend two-race event. Again, the leaders coming down Marine Drive, ready to go through the start-finish area. Clara Hughes in the Sequoia purple jersey has some company. Leslie Tomlinson, number 153, along with Sue Palmer, two teammates that works to her advantage. This is the group chasing, but they're over a minute behind. They really have to make up some ground if they're going to challenge and bridge to the lead group. 
Again, through the start-finish area, just two laps remaining for the women. It's an 11.7-kilometer loop in the Tour de White Rock. And included in the final two laps, four very challenging climbs. This is the group chasing. They're over a minute 10 behind in that group. Names like Megan McKenna, who's an extremely good sprinter, but has to get in position to try to catch up with Clara Hughes, a 21-year-old wearing the purple leader's jersey as the overall points leader in the Canadian Tire Cycling Series. Just zipping by her was Sue Palmer, her teammate from Team Kalu, wearing number 152. And 155 and an interesting strategy, Marianne Berglund right on the wheel of whoever is leading up. Team Kalua's strategy is try and test Marianne Berglund to see if she's strong enough for these final two laps. Marianne Berglund has to stick like glue with that team so she can be there at the finish line. The lead five coming down the first decline in this first half of the loop. And you'll see down at the bottom of the hill, they have to make a very sharp left turn. Again, Clary Hughes with the group behind her. She is taking her turn up the front. Quick left as you see, then a very quick right back on the Marine Drive. Back into the residential areas, and again, a Team Kahlua rider. Leslie Tomlinson, another veteran on that team, taking the turn up front. They're doing the work up front, letting Clara sit in behind and rest. And Marianne Berglund has to chase down. Now Clara takes her turn off the front. And Marianne Berglund, you have to stick in there or she can be left behind. Well, Berglund knows right away that she cannot afford to let anybody in this lead group away. She's a terrific sprinter and knows if it gets into a sprint, she'll be there for it. Taking off again, Sue Palmer as she takes off down the left side of the road. But very quickly, the remaining four riders jump right on and are not going to let anybody get away. So as you can see, the race is shaped up to be a five-woman race. The chase group is too far behind to really make an impact. Sue Palmer turns, she sees Clara Hughes as they come back down Marine Drive, back to the start-finish area. Marianne Berglund wearing number 155, right behind. So they come through the start-finish area, 11.7 kilometers left as you hear the bell. The great thing about this is that the start finish is on an incline. It is not an out and out sprinter's course coming through the start finish area. There is a bit of a climb involved. So again, strategy pays an important part when they get to the bottom of the hill. That's right, their legs are tired after this long race. They have to get into this sprint situation for the long finish uphill. And every time, Clara Hughes of the Kahlua team, you see her in the purple jersey there in the yellow helmet, tries to get sprung to the lead. It turns out that Linda Jackson and Marianne Berglund just chase her down. Caught in a cat and mouse game, and Linda Jackson is the one in the green and black with the black helmet, specialized pedal team, and she has to feel like she has a chance too if she can just get by this team Kahlua. Great look at the effort on Leslie Tomlinson's face as she comes up one of the climbs here in the Tour de White Rock. And watch the way these five riders play against one another. As soon as one tries to stretch it out a little, another is there. And right on Clary Hughes' tail is Marianne Berglund, who has not let a lead rider out of her sight. Incredible, even moving back and forth as they go up this very steep final hill before the final downhill of the finish line. So swinging around again. The five riders who are vying for the championship in the Tour de White Rock. Clara Hughes, quick look over her shoulder to check where the competition is and also where her teammates are wearing the yellow helmets. Marianne Berglund, though, right on her wheel. She won the Edmonton Road Race uh, in the Canadian Tire Series just a week ago, so she has some experience here. Sue Palmer. Off the top as they get ready now to come through the start finish area and you can see on the right Marianne Berglund did not wait as soon as they got to the bottom of the hill she pulled away using her terrific sprinting ability she pulled away made it look easy Linda Jackson of Specialized Pedal in second Leslie Tomlinson of Kahlua in third place Clara Hughes with the same time in fourth Sue Palmer in fifth but a great race strategy by Marianne Berglund as she took top spot. You sat in and stayed with that lead group throughout the race. What did you want to do coming down this final stretch? Well, again, I, I wanted to make sure that nobody got away. That's why when you have three riders like that, it's just like a hockey game that you, you're going to have a hard time covering everything. So you want to make sure that 
you have the riders ahead of you instead of having them behind you where they can surprise you. So going into it, I want to make sure that I was in the second or third position and I also want to make sure that I knew where, where Clara Hughes was. Clara Hughes was behind Mary Ann Berglund, the winner of the Tour de White Rock, followed by Linda Jackson and Leslie Tomlinson. Stay with us. Coming up next, the Women's Criterium as the Canadian Tire National Cycling Series continues. Welcome back to Vancouver. Rob Falls along with Eric Moffitt for the Canadian Tire Cycling Grand Prix. And the final race is a criterium, 38 laps, 35 kilometers for the women. Yesterday, the Tour of White Rock certainly tightened up the standings, and somebody from Team Kahlua could take top spot overall. Right now, leading the standings is Clara Hughes, and she's with Eric Moffitt. Eric? Thanks, Rob. Clara, yesterday, just out of the money in fourth place. How are you getting ready for today's criterium? Well, for me, yesterday was just kind of a warm-up. I wasn't sure how my legs were going to feel because I just did uh, two weeks of training on the velodrome. But I hope, you know, today's going to be better. We have three Kahlua riders in the race, so we're going to do our best to get one of us away because, unfortunately, none of us can really match uh, Marianne's sprint, and Megan McKenna is also very strong in the sprint. So we're hoping today to get one of us away, and we're going to work on that. And, you know, last 10 laps, if it's still together, there's going to be a lot of attacks going, that's for sure. So the riders to watch for those attacks. Marianne Berglund, yesterday's winner. Linda Jackson from the Specialized Pedal Team. Her teammate, Jody Cross. And from Team Kahlua, Leslie Tomlinson. The Gastown Grand Prix is 38 laps, a 0.9 kilometer course, different from last year, shorter. They send the riders in the opposite direction, and there are a couple of very tricky spots that these riders have to watch for. But Clara Hughes is the rider we are watching now in the purple jersey, signifying the overall lead in the Canadian Tire Cycling Series. She rides for Team Kahlua. We pick it up with 25 laps remaining. They're going through what we are calling the Gassy Jack Wedge here in Gastown, and that will prove to be a pivotal part of the race. And guess who is right behind her again? Marianne Berglund, yesterday's winner, of course, Right behind her, Linda Jackson, and all of a sudden, <laughs> we have the same big three in this uh, early part of the race. Deja vu. Now you see Marianne Berglund coming out of the Gassy Jack wedge, taking it into the back stretch. Berglund, Hughes, and Jackson. Interesting, Hughes said she was practicing on the velodrome. She needs uh, some criterium work, I guess, because she's a very good road racer. Now, Marianne Berglund, of course, is not. She's a great Criterium racer. And you saw there on that quick switch back to the chase group, two Team Kahlua members in the front of the chase. They will either slow down the chase to help out Clara Hughes, or if they decide to bridge to give her that chance towards the end to try to spring loose past who seems to be the best spreader there. That's Marianne Berglund in the blue. You can see how tight this course is. They're taking it very slowly on the corners. I think you'll see a little bit faster later in the men's race. Earlier in the day, there were some junior races and it had rained. And when this course gets wet, it becomes very, very treacherous, especially on the cobblestone. They're coming through the Gassy Jack wedge and on that final turn coming through the start finish. That's something Clara Hughes is well aware of. I'm going to be riding really careful out there because, you know, um, I do need the points. And just to keep the overall lead, I, you know, I don't want to get caught in behind something. So I'm going to try and stay at the front. And I don't want to crash myself. That's for sure. That's embarrassing when that happens. Nothing to be embarrassed about right now as Clara Hughes, along with Linda Jackson and Marianne Berglund, come through the start finish. 21 laps to go. Marianne Berglund, by the way, just won a $200 preem for being first across the line. A little incentive for you, some extra cash on the line, Eric. Yeah, just some sponsorship money there that they do on special races. Keeps the race exciting and, and also increases the pace of the race. And that pace of the race has changed as the chase group has picked the pace up to catch the three lead riders. Berglund, Jackson, and Hughes are now in a lead group. 
As they come through the gassy jack wedge into the back straight, you can take a look at the riders making the turn and a good lead group now. But again, there were Team Kalua riders in there, along with Clara Hughes wearing the purple jersey, yellow helmet. You can see her right there behind Marianne Berglund, who's wearing the white helmet and the blue shirt, just coming to the top make it around the turn. You can see Marianne Berglund's testing again. Even though she's on her own, she knows this is her ground, the criterium. And the Kalua team continuing, even though they've caught the group again, they've got to make sure to block her and block those other riders to put Clara Hughes out front. Marianne Berglund taking her turn at the top, being chased by Clara Hughes. Still to come, the men's Tour de White Rock. And their criterium, the Canadian Tire Gastown Grand Prix. 20 laps to go. Now Leslie Tomlinson of Team Kalua takes the lead. Good look at the group that is making it through this .9 kilometer course. Very tight now. They changed it from one year ago. They shortened it, tightened up some of the curves, and have sent the riders in the opposite direction. And all the riders have commented on how much more they like the course. They like it, of course, unless they're going a little too fast, as uh, some of those earlier riders showed in the races. There are crashes out there if you're not careful. Leslie Tomlinson takes a look over her left shoulder, sees you know who, Marianne Berglund, who has decided again to stick with the lead rider in preparation for a late sprint if it has to come down to that. Good look at the intensity on these riders' faces as they make the turn again through that tight final corner coming through the start finish. 33 riders started, but that has been whittled away because of attrition. And right now, it will be an interesting race to the finish. We'll come back with more from the Gastown Grand Prix. Welcome back to the Canadian Tire Gastown Grand Prix and the Tour de White Rock. I'm Rob Folds along with Eric Moffat. As we continue with the women's criterium, four laps to go on this 0.9 kilometer criterium course through Gastown. In the lead, in the purple jersey with the yellow helmet, Clara Hughes, a 21 year old, originally from Winnipeg, now makes her home in Hamilton. She is the overall points leader. That's why she's wearing the purple jersey. She rides for Team Kalua. She's got some teammates behind her, but right now her concern is 155, wearing the blue jersey with the white helmet right behind her, Marianne Berglund of Bodywise. And part of that concern is because the field is very small. Through attrition, we've lost a lot of riders, and so Kalua has to worry about uh, less riders in the back, but Marianne Bergen also has a great shot. Well, the weather has cooperated. The rain that was forecast has held off. The course is dry and fast. Leslie Tomlinson takes off, but right on her wheel, Marianne Berglund. See that tight final corner there. And these final laps, I think, are going to have to exercise extreme caution if these riders don't want to crash. And some other good sprinters. We should not just point at Marianne Berglund. There's Megan McKenna, who everybody really thinks is one of the up-and-coming riders in this country. As you see, three laps remaining. Coming through the gassy jack wedge, swinging into the back stretch. And in fourth place there in the green and white, another Kahlua teammate, but wearing the BC color, Sarah Neal. Just named to the British Columbia team is Sarah Neal. We have nicknamed this the Gassy Jack Wedge. You see the leaders. They have lapped the field. They are setting the pace. Leslie Tomlinson taking her turn up front. Marianne Berglund right behind. Also in this group, Linda Jackson, specialized pedal team. Again, it was Berglund, Jackson, and Tomlinson in the top three yesterday at the Tour de White Rock. Tomlinson and Palmer, uh, the Sumer Domestiques, in the last few years, both have had big crashes, came back to help their teammates, and really have been a big part of today's races. You mentioned her, there's Sue Palmer. She's a real up-and-comer as a real uh, support rider. She's so strong. Look how strong she is on her bike. Leads out the pack and really is setting the pace for this uh, final few laps. But the fact that this criterium is over such a tight course, two laps remaining, you have to think it is Marianne Berglund's race to win or lose if she makes the wrong tactical move. She seems to be the best sprinter, and I would have to say by far is the best sprinter in the lead group. It's whether or not Team Kalua can pretty much block her out of the picture 
to spring forth perhaps a Clara Hughes. That's the challenge by Kahlua. Marianne Berglund, since winning the World Championship in 1983, has done nothing but excel at Criterium. She knows how to avoid those kind of blocks. And it has really been Team Kahlua's year. Clara Hughes, we've mentioned a lot. She is first overall in the standings, but numbers two, three, and four in the overall point standings, all from Team Kahlua. And of course, one who isn't here, who's racing uh, mountain bikes, is Allison Sider, who was probably the best of that bunch. So they are so strong, even without the, wow, look at that corner. Coming through the final turn into the start finish area. One lap remaining in this .9 kilometer course. Women setting up for a sprint. And right now, Marianne Berglund, the veteran, is putting herself in a terrific position. Linda Jackson out front right now in the black helmet is also in a good position, even though she doesn't have as strong a team as Kahlua. All, as long as she stays in front of Berglund, she has a great chance to win this race. So we watch as they come through the Gassy Jack Wedge. Making the turn, they'll quick right into the back stretch and they'll start to position. Marianne Berglund wearing the blue with the white helmet. Again, we'll watch the positioning of the Team Kahlua riders and you can see them starting to put them into place, but there goes Marianne Berglund. Berglund starting to pull away. She's trying to take the lead now to get herself into a comfortable position so she won't have to worry about that final turn. She can maintain the lead in the final turn. It could be hers. Marianne Berglund in the lead as she takes the final turn coming through the start-finish area. She starts to take up, head down. Berglund, quick look over her shoulder. She knows she's completed the double, the Tour de White Rock and the Gastown Grand Prix. Sarah Neal in very quickly for second place in the stretch drive. Clara Hughes in third. For Berglund, her eighth straight win, and she spoke to Eric Moffat. Going into the last lap, we had uh, Linda Jackson went up in the front, and I thought, well, if I try to, to jump, maybe maybe uh, Clara would, uh, would try then to uh, counterattack. So I was just sitting on Linda, and then I jumped when it was about uh, probably 400 meters to go. A great weekend of racing for you. Yeah, it has been a good weekend. It's been, uh, it's been a wonderful time up here in Canada. I'm, I'm really glad that I had opportunity to come up and do these races. Congratulations. Thank you very much. The smile of champion Marianne Berglund, who outdueled Sarah Neal and Clara Hughes in the Gastown Grand Prix. In fact, a terrific weekend for her. She won both events to take the overall weekend title. Marianne Berglund outdueling Linda Jackson and Clara Hughes. And the Canadian Tire Series champion wearing the purple jersey, Clara Hughes wrapped it up with her teammates Sue Palmer and Leslie Tomlinson right behind. Overall, Team Kahlua. Could you imagine anybody else? Specialized pedal in second and the London Cycling Club in third.